Dylan, did you see that abandoned movement endorse Jill Stein? Yeah, the abandoned Harris movement, or as I like to call it, Proxy Trump. Just You just call them Proxy Trump supporters, just Proxy Trumpers. And that, because to be clear, the thing that they're proposing is just let's get Trump to win so we can piss off the Democrats because then we can make Hillary Clinton cry. You're going to make a bunch of people's, you know, Medicaid support cry. You're going to make a bunch of people's, you know, potential child tax credits, which could help bring down child poverty again. You're going to make them cry. You're going to make a lot of other people cry. Hell, hell those who are reliant on a productive NLRB, the unions out there, going to make all them cry as well. But, you know, hey, at least Hillary Clinton can cry. At least Biden will cry. Not really. Biden will probably just go back to his home in Scranton or somewhere and he'll just like fish or like probably touch up his car and eat chocolate chocolate chip ice cream for the rest of his days. So, oh, but I'll we'll screw on his legacy. Oh yeah, congratulations. Congratulations. You made Biden a one-term president and Trump a two-term president. The guys whose current policy on TV is hey, bomb the nuclear facilities. Israel is not going far enough. Israel needs to go further. Bomb the nuclear facilities. Let's get him elected to save palestine you have to be the dumbest of dumb tools to buy this if you believe this is going to help in any way by you throwing a hissy fit in the middle of the election because you don't like that we have a two-party system okay this isn't germany this isn't the united kingdom this is the united states of america there's a democrat and there's a republican that's how it is jill stein's not going to win cornell west is not going to win rfk is not going to win your grandma is going to win elmo's not going to win santa claus is likely not going to win Biden is not going to win. There is only one option, either Donald Trump or Harris. That is the one option for this election. There's no like super sep separate option election that you like find. It's like the Stanley parable and you like clip out of the real world and you find Jill Stein. No. So if those are the only two options, your votes, reasonably speaking, when it comes to tangible material impact, and when we talk to all these Marxists, you'd think they would understand material conditions, you know, the material world, material girl, come on. The material impact can be getting one of these two people elected. If you live in a state where they're going to win anyway, like I live in Maryland, I could vote for Santa Claus, it was going to be fine, right? But when you're talking about Pennsylvania and Michigan, and that's the video we're talking about right now, Michigan, and trying to get people to vote against Harris, what you're trying to do, or what you would do in effect is give Netanyahu more leverage, give him a bigger leash, more ability to bomb Gaza, more ability to bomb Lebanon. There would be no reservation in sending of the weapons. And in fact, I think Trump's going to push him to go further. Trump is on TV calling right now for the bombing of nuclear facilities, bombing of the Iranian nuclear program. If that happens, Iran will have no choice but to respond with fire and fury. You know, the Trump quote, fire and fury. Because if they don't, their deterrence is smashed. Their deterrence is garbage. I mean, th th you, you can try to say they won't do anything. And I mean, I guess there is a chance that nothing will happen. But I think there's a much bigger chance that the Iranians will not let the entirety of their weapons build up and of their building up of this nuclear program just go out in an instant with no backlash. Because if they won't even defend the reactors, how are they going to defend anything in their regime what isn't off limits i mean let's we hear so much from the trump people about world war three world war three world war three we cannot you know let the ukrainians fire with western weapons and take out these air bases that are bombing children's hospitals because if you do it could start world war three but we got donald trump saying bomb the nuclear facilities bomb the nuclear facilities bomb the nuclear facilities on tv don't worry about it it's nothing he's the peace president remember He's the peace president. I got a little off track there, but let us let me show you guys what I'm complaining about because I feel like I'm whining to a crowd of basically just myself right now. Do I have this already pulled up? No, I don't have this pulled up. I'll have to pull it up again. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This stuff is aggravating. Here it is. This is right before introducing Dr. Jill Stein, the Green Party candidate for president. Uh... This year, the other year, and every other year into the future, if they can hook her up to like a terminal, uh, like a Terminator exoskeleton, she's gonna be like the Imperium of Man in a chair, getting reeled out every four years, see how much money she can suck up. 
election has already started. Absentee ballots have been sent. We need to catch up rapidly. We need everyone here to get active. We need to be clear about what our goals are. We are not in a position to win the White House. But we do have a real opportunity to win something historic. We could deny Kamala Harris the state of Michigan. Do you see that big cheer right there? That like 10 seconds? That's all you'd get. That's all that they would give up the election for. That 10 seconds of satisfaction that they just felt cheering for being able to say, screw you, Mr. Establishment. Screw you. That right there is what that, that, that's what it's all about. It's about flipping off the system. It's about saying, screw you. It's about being the center of attention and saying, I don't like the system as it is, so I just refuse to participate. No, not even I refuse to participate. I try to play contrary, contrary to the rules, just hoping that the rules, you know, by, by doing this, that what, the rules will change magically? Why would they? Why, if you deny Harris a victory, the Republicans would want to keep the system as it is because, hey, what you just did got them elected. Why would this change anything? It doesn't change how the Green Party Occurred. can, like, it's turn out hard. votes. It doesn't change how the Green Party answer has can access $5. power. She seems like more of one of the forces of chaos if we're using a 40K analogy. <laughs> Thank you for the $5. This doesn't achieve anything but a sense of satisfaction at being able to poke the establishment, the Democratic establishment, which uh, supported Israel uh, after October 7th, as they went into uh, uh, into Gaza and has now gone into Lebanon and was not pulling back on aid, was not ending aid. And you don't like that. You don't like that Biden supports Israel, which we all knew. You don't like that Harris supports Israel, which we all know. Uh, and so instead, you're going to choose the outcome where the person wins that supports Israel harder has is not cursing out BB in private. And if he is cursing BB out in private, it's over personal dilemmas not over the fact that he's bombing gaza or the fact he's bombing lebanon or expanding the war into beirut it's over the fact that he's not bombing iranian nuclear facilities remember this is the guy who took out soleimani this is this is not somebody this is the person who tore up the iran deal i mean the world of foreign policy exists before the world of october 7th there is more stuff to look at and the trump campaign is openly picking up the flag of the Israeli government right now and saying, charge forward, go forward, go harder. And that is why Burns Netanyahu, I think, is going in right now. Bankrupt man. Part of the reason why Netanyahu is going in right now is he can use the election as political cover. He knows for the next 30 days, Harris and Biden cannot really, because they want the votes that come with it in Pennsylvania, because people do support Israel and American Jews, do on large part support Israel and the votes you're gonna get from supporting Israel are more sizable and you can check the polling if you want to. You can try to say it's something else, but number one, the polling doesn't match up. And number two, the populations that are largely more likely to support Palestine are also the same population numbers that are less likely to turn out the vote. It's younger people that on average turn out to vote quite less and much of the activist bases that are in support of, of this movement also don't even really believe in voting in the first place. Not all of it, but definitely subsections of it. Point is, it's not as dependable of a voting block, and it does not have the same, well, let's just say, uh, legislative, or, show oh, that most ugh, legislative or financial oomph when it comes to lobby groups or the people that have uh, influence on Capitol Hill. And so the Harris campaign does not think that they can just completely say, screw the Netanyahu administration. We're not going to send any more support. Now, you can disagree with it. You can think that's awful. You can think that's terrible. That's fine. But that's the reality. And just saying that, okay, let's make sure she loses. It's one thing to count out because you say it's too more for you to participate. Is I, I, I disagree. I think everybody should use all the political capital that they have at their disposal. I disagree with that. I think you should be voting like it's a, like it's a strategy to see how much suffering you can avoid and how many people you can help. That's what it should be used as, not as 
just like I am morally standing on this or I'm morally standing on that because that's not how I vote. But if you want to, that is what it is. What you're trying to do is actively bring about the worst outcome and all so you can stand in the center of attention and say, I saved Palestine and you didn't, you didn't, you just got one of the biggest threats to the continued Burns suffering immoral, of this war corrupt, and you've elected him into office. Somebody who has no interest in bringing it to a close, who's not calling for any sort of ceasefire, has put no pressure on the Netanyahu government, has shown no indication he wants to put any pressure on the Netanyahu government, is in fact pushing them in the ultimate, in the opposite direction. And if, the, and if you can't see the difference in that policy or that difference in that type of administration, if you, I think the only thing that would make you see the difference would be the physical difference after he's in office once the Israelis think they have no leash whatsoever. And they're actively being encouraged by an American administration that might get itself more directly involved. Remember, it was Trump who did the Soleimani strike. You don't think Trump would be willing to take other high-risk operations if he was surrounded by sycophants egging him on and not just laughing at him when he's proposing invasion plans of Venezuela? Point is, not only is this bad for Americans domestically when it comes to whether it has to come to the, you know, preserving, uh, you know, a woman's right to choose or trying to reinstitute Roe versus Wade on the federal level or any of the progressive policy options that would at least be viable if Democrats controlled the executive branch and were able to keep control of the Senate and take back the House. But putting that aside, the very policy issue Tucker that they're is doing this for will be worse under Trump, much worse. Siren and it's not even debatable. Subscription. It is just like the far left to sell out the liberals to end up promoting the far right. It's just, look, this is a very small fringe of the left I want to be clear with that. This is not the majority of the left, uh, but they certainly want to grow that little bubble they live in. Hassan said Democrats would get so many votes and win easily if they embargo Israel. Uh, no.